Hi, my name is Doris Hansen. I'm from Moffitt Cancer Center. Um, today I'll be discussing our work that we presented at ASCO regarding safety and efficacy of siltacaptogene autolusol in the standard of care setting. So this was a multi-center study where we looked at um, safety and efficacy of patients that received siltacel or Carvicti um, as standard of care. So essentially, we had 153 patients who had their stem cells collected or leukophoresed, and of those, 143 received the infusion of siltacel or Carvicti. Um, I'd like to point out that there was a large proportion of patients with out-of-specification product that didn't meet the label, so that was 22%. About 57% of our patients would have been deemed ineligible for participating in the clinical trial because, as you know, clinical trials have very stringent eligibility criteria. Um, overall, we treated a patient population that had a very aggressive disease. So we had a large proportion of patients with high-risk cytogenetics. We also had patients with plasma cell leukemia, about 7% of our cohort, and uh, we had patients with non-secretory or oligosecretory myeloma. Now, in terms of safety, so the likelihood of having an immune-related adverse event, so like the fever-like or CRS syndrome or neurotoxicity was very similar to the clinical trial called CARDITUDE-1. Um, what I wanted to focus on was the delayed neurologic toxicity, which you know sometimes it can present as Parkinson's disease. So um, that occurred in 1% of patients. And then we had patients with cranial nerve palsies or uh, cranial nerve problems with Bell's palsy being the most common at 6%. We did have two patients that died of delayed neurologic toxicity and only 35% recovered their neurologic function. In terms of efficacy or how well this worked, so the response rate in the entire population was 89% with about 56% uh, of patients achieving a complete response or better. Um, in terms of progression-free survival, so we saw the six-month uh, estimate of progression-free survival in patients who received the product was 79% um, and then overall survival was 84%. So essentially by six months, they had not reached their progression-free and overall survival or the medians were not reached. Um, and essentially what we identified is that in a, in a multivariable model, so in a model taking into account all the high-risk features, we identify that patients who have high-risk cytogenetics, so Translocation 414, translocation 1416, deletion 17P. These were the patients that had an inferior response as well as survival to include progression free and overall survival. Uh, we did look at outcomes by getting a different type of chemotherapy pre CAR T, so lymphodepletion chemotherapy as we call it, and prior exposure to a BCMA agent, and we saw that didn't make a difference. So overall, I'd like to point out that this product appears to work well. It's got a favorable safety and efficacy profile that delayed neurologic toxicity occurred in 12%. And keep in mind that uh, patients with high-risk cytogenetics uh, you know, commonly will have inferior outcomes, but they still respond. So I'd like to conclude by saying that, you know, this therapy is feasible outside of the clinical trial and somebody, you know, should benefit from it. They don't have to meet uh, criteria to be able uh, to get this good response uh, or good safe, uh, or efficacy profile with this treatment. Thank you.